Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being online today. My name is Marilyn Maxwell and I'll be facilitating the webinar today. We're going to be covering how to build your HAR website, kind of an overview of all the main functionalities in the template and a few extra bells and whistles that you can use to enhance the website as well. Uh, my contact information is on, should be on your screen, so feel free to jot that down or take a picture or make a note of that. And during the webinar, if you have any questions, it would be fine to unmute yourself and let me know and I'll answer them that way. You're also more than welcome to use the chat if you prefer to do that. In the webinar today, again, we will cover uh, using options from the template, adding some of the basics like your bio photo, some video, neighborhood information, designations, languages and cultures, and your social media links. And then lastly, we'll add on those extras. So to begin the process, we're going to go ahead and log into HAR.com. And from the dashboard, you could do two different things. You can either use the search box to search for the website by name, or you can use the menu structure on the left, and you'll click on Tools, Website and Blog, and then Manage Your Website. And from here, we're starting off with using the template. All right, so what kind of scrolling down the center portion of the page, you'll see header, sell your home, tools, about me, all those different sections. When you scroll through, it may be in a little bit different order, and that's okay. You can actually click and hold and drag most all these sections other than the header. You can drag and drop and move around the different sections of your website. And we'll see the live version of that here in just a moment. One thing to note, I've already created my website. You may not have done that portion yet. About where it says customize your homepage on my screen, when you log in, it may ask you to create your website. And it'll have www.har.com slash and then something in a box. You actually can't use what's in the box just the way it is. You have to type in that box. Even if you type the exact same words that were already in that box, you have to manually type something into that box to create your webpage. And then your web page is har.com slash whatever you chose. Mine is my name. I just chose Marilyn Maxwell. So har.com slash Marilyn Maxwell. All right. So that's one step that I don't have a way to show you on the screen. Uh, quick and easy to set it up, though. And then it'll take you right to the layout that we're looking at here together. All right. Um, looking at some of these sections, you're simply going to check what you do want to use and uncheck what you don't want to use. It's a little cart before horse because you may not have even seen your web page yet. You may have just created it. All right. In the upper right corner, there is a preview option. So previewing here, these tools, the home search, apartment finder, CMA request, all of those things are what we were looking at back here on this page. So under those tools are consumer tools. Again, you can preview at any time and just look through, see how it looks. Maybe now that you've seen that these tools are, you have to scroll down a bit to get to them. Maybe you want to move them higher. Again, whatever your preference is. All right. Um, your ratings, I'll talk just briefly about client experience rating a little toward the end of the webinar if I can work it in. Um, your listings, even if you don't have listings currently, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and check the box by those different status options. It's smart enough to know you don't have listings. It won't put, you know, listing result zero or anything like that on your web page. That section just simply kind of goes away when there's no listings and comes back when there are listings. One of the things that um, I have uh, utilized over here on the far right side of each box is whether something is visible or not visible. Uh, I would highly encourage you to leave all the different sections visible. I'm a full-time employee at HAR and we don't practice, so I don't have listings nor will I ever have listings. And I don't want to confuse a consumer um, and have some other uh, showings or leases or anything ever pop up on that. Uh, I just don't need that section on mine. You would, most likely. All right, so make sure all of the different sections say visible. Last couple of things down here, neighborhoods um, is something else that you can edit. When you first start using the program, 
Um, it's going to default to the neighborhoods where you've done an MLS transaction, whether you represented the buyer, the seller, the landlord, or the tenant. It's going to put that as a neighborhood that you specialize in because you've done business there. If you are um, subscribed to the Platinum Package, you'll have access to the website template, but you'll also have access to changing those neighborhoods if you wanted to do that. This is just to kind of add on, tweak the idea of what neighborhood you specialize in. Again, the default is where you've done business, and then you would choose custom. And then you can simply come down to all these little circles and just click and choose which ones you do business in. You can have a maximum of 15 chosen, just be mindful of that. And instead of randomly clicking like I did, you wanna be mindful about what you choose. You wanna make sure that you're choosing areas of town that you do have um, a, a good solid market knowledge in, um, maybe where you have done business uh, or where you're trying to build your sphere so that you again have um, a good bit of information. You wouldn't want to profess to be an expert in 1960 Cyprus and have someone call or email asking you questions and have to say, I don't know. So again, just be mindful, but there are lots to choose from. And again, you can have a maximum of 15 total. Right. So back where we came from, from that website builder. Uh, again, I'll talk about recommendations and client ratings a little toward the end. Right. So that's it in terms of the template and um, the beginning steps. Again, be sure to preview it once you turn things off or on, select or deselect things. Preview it again. Make sure that you like the way it looks. Looking at my preview again, I have this background image of the beach with a nice campfire and some coffee. That's kind of me in a nutshell. If I could be on the beach camping out and or drinking coffee, I'm a happy girl. So that picture suited me well. We have over 100,000 images in our uh, catalog, so you can choose from any of the ones that we have. You can upload your own as well, so you don't have to just use one of our stock images. Right? So going back to where we're building a web page, design, let you change your cover image. And again, we have a handful of um, default images here for you to choose from. I think there's 13 on that page. So Houston skyline, waterfront property. If any of those appeal to you, then you can choose those. Again, we do have a catalog of images with uh, over 100,000 images in there. They're all copyright free. You're all, all you're totally um, uh, able to use any of those, all right? And then in this box, you can type keywords like home, lake, house, neighbor, Texas, as it says there. And I'm gonna pick Houston, type Houston weather. And you can see I've got quite a few skyline photos. I had a skyline photo in the first selection, but maybe it didn't suit my fancy for some reason. This one gives me multiple different views of the same Houston skyline. Um, but they just have a little bit different look and feel to them all. So that's a real quick, easy way, again, to find a photo that might uh, be more your style and be more your preference. And this is kind of cute with the little Houston, Texas um, emblem there. I have 62 pages worth of potential photos if I wanted to continue on through that just with one keyword, Houston. Again, you can put Houston, you can put lofts, you can put... Um, foreclosure, you can put, you know, whatever you can think of uh, in there in search properties more and more and more specifically. 62 pages is fun because you have lots of choices, but it also will take a long time to go through all those. So multiple keywords here will kind of help resolve that. And then lastly, as I mentioned, you can upload your own image. So if you've taken an image, taken a photo of something and you really like that and want to use that as your image, you certainly can do that. You just simply browse on your source, either your computer or Google Drive, box.net, wherever, wherever it is, you have it saved and you can upload that photo. And then that becomes the background image. Again, you always have the option to preview. <laughs> Excuse me. You always have the option to preview. So be sure to do that. Check it out. Make sure you like it. And then you can move on to the rest of the steps. 
All right, so moving into profile. Your personal headshot. There's a place to upload that. And then also the place to write out your bio. This part is, uh, I'm sure, something that you're familiar with. It's where you talk about how amazing you are. I'm Marilyn, and I'm amazing, and let me count the ways, right? Um, on this particular web builder, you're going to click on Edit. And then Add New Bio. Every time you want to add a new bullet point or a paragraph, you have to click Add New Bio, write out the text, and then save that item, all right? So clicking on Add New Bio, again, it gives me a paragraph or bullet option. And whatever it is that I want to type in there and add to my bio, and then be sure to click Save. Our system doesn't understand the Enter key, so if I were to try to make my own bulleted list by hitting Enter in between, it would not work. It would come out as one big long sentence. So write one thing, click save, and then add new bio to add it in. All right. You can see where it's added it. Now it's really, really pale, but off to the far left of each of these bullets and paragraphs, there's like six little dots in very light gray. Again, you can click and hold and drag and rearrange it. So just depending on where you want that to fall on your bio, you can place it wherever you'd like. Now the text of my bio is very different than yours again because I'm a an instructor, a trainer for HAR. Um, my focus is getting people to the education website, emailing me to uh, ask questions about tools and things like that. The focus of yours, of course, is going to be more real estate related. Why you're a good realtor, what skill sets you have. Um, even if you're brand new, you have skill sets. It, um, sometimes overwhelming to new licensees to try to think about how to write a bio because they're thinking I'm brand new to real estate and that can get a little overwhelming. But again, if you were a um, CPA before you got your real estate license, boy, do you know all the math, right? You um, uh, would be able to give them a very solid uh, CMA, um, be um, very helpful in negotiations to have all that mathematical knowledge. So um, helping them guesstimate their list price and budget for their purchase and things like that. So you'd have some good um, talents and skills that you could bring to the table. Um, I always use stay-at-home moms. If you were a stay-at-home mom or dad, you have uh, negotiation skills. You have time management skills, right? Um, so again, lots of good skill sets, whether you had a long-term career in real estate or not. And then even if you have been licensed for quite some time, think about some of those other skill sets, maybe to freshen up your bio if you haven't uh, rewritten it or tweaked it over the years that it's been there. Uh, the idea here is to try to say, I am really good. Um, I would be a good choice because of this skill set and then relate how that skill set will benefit the consumer. So I am really good at math because I was a CPA for 25 years that then allows me to have a leg up on negotiating, running CMAs and average costs and things like that. So again, relate it to the consumer in the end. All right, and then you can see off to the side, it's very easy to edit or delete any portion of your bio once you have it written. Um, again, if you need to tweak it and freshen it up just a little bit, you can do that. I've been with HAR now for 14 years. I just celebrated my anniversary, so I'll make that quick tweak. Again, click Save to make sure it is saved. All right, so it's pretty simple to navigate. I just realized my old extension is there. We recently got a new phone system. So now it's just freshened up a touch, all right? And things that you do outside of real estate, volunteering at the food bank uh, was just a quick example I could think of. Um, you know, you're a soccer mom or dad, you're a um, volunteer of some sort, uh, you are into quilting or things like that. Non-real estate things, again, it helps relate to the consumer. 
Uh, of course, you want to have some, some business re uh, related materials first. That's kind of the primary focus, but then throw in some of those, what I call warm fuzzies, because if they're like, oh, I crochet, she crochets, we're kind of the same person, right? It is just human nature to gravitate toward people who have the same um, hobbies and likes and things like that, that we do. We gravitate toward each other. So add in some of those as well, right? So those are some of the basics, um, moving through some of the kind of second tier, um, if you will. Let me go back to the beginning. Want me to slide go this way. All right, so now backing up to edit site. Profile was what we just finished. We'll talk about the rest um, after we've built it. There are things that uh, occur after you've built it, not things that you're building. Um, editing the site, uh, again, we started off with the home page um, options, which were just the check boxes to select the different portions of the template. The site menu lets you see what all is on the menu itself. Let me go to a preview real quickly and show you that. In the top left corner, there's my menu. And so all of these different things are on the menu and in each of those different sections. Find a home, consumer tools, and a resource center. Sorry. Okay. Right, so again, consumer tools, resource center, find a home. If you don't want those particular things listed in the menu, you certainly can do that. Uh, just uncheck it. And again, you've got your little gray dots here where you can drag and drop and rearrange those if you would like to do that. So same types of functionalities here, just a little bit different area of the site that you are editing. And then lastly, in that section, you can add a page that you built or add external links. We'll build a page together here in the next section. So we'll talk about that briefly. I'm adding an external link. Maybe perhaps you have a non-HAR website and there's a really great article for first-time home buyers that you've written up and you have a, that on a, a page on your other website. Or maybe you found a really good resource on your company's website or realtor.com or uh, whatever it might be, HGTV, right? Uh, you can click and add a link to that other page, give it a title, copy and paste the link, and then that will add that item to your menu as well. So you would have custom pages or custom links that you added in here. Just wanted to stop highlighting them. There you go. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> One thing to be mindful of is you only have so much room in each menu. If you look here, I only probably can fit one more thing in the find a home section and maybe two, maybe three in the resource center. So just be mindful of that as you're adding custom pages, you want to make sure that you actually can fit, you can house that page in the menu. Again, you can take out things from the menu as well. So uh, where I was highlighting the high rise finder, um, apartment finder, maybe you don't want some of those types of things on your menu and you don't want to offer that tool, just simply uncheck the box and you've got some more room for new links you might be adding. Right. Again, the add a page you built is a little cart before horse. We haven't built the page together yet, so let's go on in and do that. On the left side menu is our custom pages. And as you can imagine, it's a custom page. You're writing this from scratch. Um, I always say if you have, be the source of the source, not the source. Uh, it will save you some time. It will give you some good relevant content that's already been um, perused as being um, factual. It's already been fact checked. Um, it's fine to write your own. If you have the time and you have the knowledge, please do. That's ideal is to be able to write your own custom page. But if, again, you could go to HGTV like I did, find a really great article, you can either link that page or you can copy and paste and create a custom page out of that. N neither is wrong or right. There are just two different ways that you can do it. Um, if you link to the page on HGTV's website or realtor.org or whatever it is, uh, you just want to make sure that that link stays alive for the duration of the time that you have it in the menu. Also, the 
perk of uh, having a custom page on your site is that you can then share that page to other different platforms. If you're just linking to a page on another non-HAR website page, um, you're just posting the link on your website here, and that's it. You just have to rely on someone going to the uh, menu and then clicking the link. Then those people have left your site, and they've gone to that other third-party site. So again, I kind of lean toward custom pages more so than linking to the content on someone else's page. Personal preference, but really it's up to you. All right, similar to writing our bio, we're just gonna click on the big old button right here to begin the process of creating a page. A title is required, so you'll see the asterisk there. You'll have to give it a title. I'm feeling crazy creative this today. Uh, then you'll need to add an image. You can do a couple of different things if you have an image on your computer. If you have images in Dropbox, Google Drive, on Facebook, that type of thing, you can link the two together and upload. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second and I will find a photo for you upload. Your other option is that you can just drag and drop. So if you find a photo, you can drag and drop. All right. And once you're happy with the size and the shape, you can crop it, you can make it round, you can rotate it. So again, when you're happy with it, just click on save. And upload. Now that's the photo that goes along with your custom page. All right. And then down a little further is the big box to type all the content in with a create button down below. Right. Right. And then when you're creating a custom page, Generally speaking, it's it's a page, so it probably would have several paragraphs, maybe some bullets. You can add bulleted and numbered lists up here. Uh, you can make the font bold, italic, strike through, um, clear all formatting. They have a handful of formats that you can choose from if you want to change the size and look of different portions of the text that you're writing on the page. And last but not least, there is an option to upload images as a part of the page. So rather than having a header image like I have now, it would put the content into uh, the um, photo into where you're typing the content so that maybe the text would wrap around that picture. It would just be embedded in what you're picking, right? So you can have more than one picture and you can format the text pretty easily, right? So that's really it to creating a page. Again, it's pretty user friendly. The hardest part maybe is going to be coming up with the topic and writing a whole page worth of uh, information about that topic, frankly. Um, but you can do it, All right? And then click on create again to create that page. So now you can see I have three different ones. I've got top 10 best selling secrets for buying a home and selling a home. And now this one for um, example for my webinar, all right? So now it's added that page to my website, but it hasn't yet put it on the menu. This is where I have to go back to the site menu section and decide where it's going to go. So it will fit in Find a Home. It will fit in Resource Center. All right, so I'm going to think I put it in Resource Center. So I'll click to add a page I built. Pick the page that I just wrote. And save. All right, so now if I refresh, you'll see in the menu that it has added that page. Again, I could have clicked and click, click and hold my mouse button down. I could drag it up. Um, and put it higher on the list if that's what I want. I presume to put it at the bottom because um, anything new is just added to the bottom. So again, you can rearrange that if you want it to be in a different order. I'm a little OCD-ish. I would like those to be in alphabetical order, but I'm going to refrain. 
<laughs> from doing that. Oops, I must have dark it too far. Sorry. My eyes deceived me. I thought it was not there any longer. All right, so that is it for custom pages in slideshow in the most basic form. I mentioned earlier that you can also copy and paste. You can borrow content. You always have to cite the source. I'm looking at my top 10 best kept secrets for buying a home. Got my little header graphic, my title, and then all this content. I literally went to HGTV. These two articles, I had just Googled buyers and sellers. These two articles came up. I thought they looked pretty good in terms of the number of paragraphs they had, the uh, rice robust content. And I liked the way it was laid out in 10 easy steps, uh, numbered 10 to one, all right? Um, I, again, have to be sure to cite the source. If you borrow content from anywhere, always cite that source. Otherwise, it's stealing the content instead of borrowing the content. So you don't want to do that. All right. A little bit further down, I have a URL specific to this page. Again, I can now promote that URL on Facebook or Twitter, email it to some folks. It's already a part of my website in the menu. I'm going to do a little bit extra with it, though, to make it a little more prominent on the website. So for now, we have to rely on somebody coming to the web page and clicking on menu to see those top 10 articles that I have created with that HGTV content. When I have someone come to my website, they may not think to click there in the upper left corner and go into the menu. They're may get, maybe going to scroll across my website first, scroll through it. I want to pause here and just wait for this to advance on its own. There was a fake open house of mine. Here's a fake new listing of mine. Recommendations again, which I'll roll into the latter part of the webinar. And here they are. Here's a link to my article, thinking of selling and thinking of buying um, buyers and sellers resources. So this is called a slideshow. All these things that are sliding along are things that I've created myself and added to the slideshow, All right? So if we back up to our main menu again, just below custom pages is slideshow. Maybe I just want to have a reference to that article so that it's more prominently out in front of them. Uh, or again, maybe I want to add something like that new listing or open house that's just custom content. A uh, slide is designed to be pretty short and sweet. It's so just a line or two. It has, again, a big button over here to create to begin the process. The title is required. So again, thinking of buying and selling is what I had, or open house or new listing. Uh, it does, again, have a place for you to upload an image. And then the big old box to type in the content. Even though, excuse me, I've got the hiccups. Uh, even though the um, box is the same size, the amount of content you're going to have on a slider is much smaller, right? Um, you can also click here to link. These options were available on the custom pages as well if you need to do that. All you have to do is link text. So type the text. And then if you highlight that text and click on link, there'll be a space for you to add the URL. So back when I was previewing the um, custom page that I had written, there was that space that said get URL. This would be where I would want to paste that URL, all right? You can also open the page since I didn't copy it a moment ago. I'll do it that way. Right. And then click OK. So you'll have some text that you can click and some text that is not clickable linked text. 
make sense. Everybody good so far? Remember, if you need anything, feel free to unmute yourself or use the chat. All right, moving on down again, I would click on create. And now I've added the, oops, I gotta get the title. I'll also call it example for webinar. Yeah, I have brain hiccups as well as the regular hiccups. All right, so now I've added that to my slideshow. All right, so now if we go back and preview. There it is, my sample. Right. If I click there, it's going to open my top 10 secrets for buying the home. Right. You can just put text again the way that I did it on my page when I had an open house to add in is an example of that. Let me get there. Just saying I'm going to have an open house at 1234 Maple and it's going to be from two to four. That's it. Not linking to another page. It's just my old out of date fake open house. Right. New listing and just the basic information about it. So this is just creating one slide, no links. It's not pointing to anywhere else. It's just keeping all of that content right there on the slide, right? So a couple of different ways that you can do that. Obviously, you would probably want to have more than one um, slide. You've got to slide over to something else to be effective. If you only have one slider, one slide rather, it doesn't have anywhere to slide to, so it won't have that same visual effectiveness, right? And again, you can click and drag and drop. Uh, these dots are a little darker on this screen, so you can just click and drag and make it make sense you know, to, to you, however you'd like it to show. All right, and then obviously off to the side, you can edit, view, and delete. Again, pretty user-friendly, I think, in terms of um, functionality. All right. So now moving into featured listings, a couple extra little bells and whistles you could add. Again, this depends upon you having listings. So if you don't have any listings right now, then there's not much for you to do on this particular portion just yet. Um, if you'll notice, it's set to automatic and it will always display the four most recent listings within the last 30 days, um, uh, listing date order within the last um, 30 days, right? Um, if you want to customize that, um, Maybe you have had uh, a bunch of foreclosures recently, and those aren't the most glamorous looking of properties, so you don't necessarily want to feature those four, but you have a handful of other listings, more traditional resale or new construction or something like that. If you click on the custom option, you can then pick and choose. I don't have any, but again, if I did have listings, they would be in this area, and I could just check the box one by one, to select which property it is I wanted to feature, all right? And this just makes a whole new section to feature your listings on your website. That's right, nope. I'm gonna pull up another sample of somebody who does have listings. All right, so this is the sample of a practicing agent. Again, the client experience rating stars are showing there. We're getting to that. We'll talk about it here in just a moment. And then if we scroll down, here's is slider information. And then a little further down here are those top featured listings. So um, again, he has uh, the option to customize which one it's featuring. And he can also set it on that um, default to just let it show the last four in listing date range order. All right. And then this is going to be everything else he has for sale. So it just adds a new section of featured homes that kind of stand out above and beyond 
what else I have maybe in my listings right now. You can see he's doing fine. He's got several different listings there. Um, he's just highlighting that one at 450,000 Alvin. All right. And then as we scroll down, there's recently sold properties. So things where he has participated in the sale of that particular transaction. Recently leased. And then lastly, recent showings. So these are properties where he's made an appointment and gone and shown the property. It's not necessarily still available and it's not necessarily sold. It's just things that he has uh, shown recently. It could have been an agent preview as well and it would show up in that showings section. So again, all of these are options for you when you are creating your web page. All right, automatic was. Your last option is you don't want to show any of those things. You don't want to feature any in particular. It will automatically show your listings, your sales, and your showings. You don't have to worry with those. It's automatically going to be a part of the website by default. Um, but you would turn off those features. Coming here to the featured listing side, click on do not show if you don't want to feature any properties specifically. And then to change whether it's showing your listings, solds, or showings, that was back on the main home menu when you're working with a regular template. It's got a little checkbox you can turn on and turn off that feature. All right. Uh, moving on now to a blog. I know you have heard of a blog. Uh, we offer you a blog as well as a website with your Platinum subscription. So uh, in that same tools menu under website and blog, you'll see manage your blog. You would also have to set it up first, much like we had to set the web page up first. Uh, you've got to create your blog, and then you can go through and create the content on that blog. And it'll link the two together. Again, going back to my preview here, one of the things in my main menu is my blog. So um, if you're interested in blogging, there you go. Um, we don't spend a lot of time on it in this particular class, but just know that you do have a blog. Once you click on tools, manager, uh, blog, website and blog, and then manager blog. There's a little watch and learn video right here. It lasts about two minutes or so, and it walks you through all the different functionalities and features of the blog. Again, pretty straightforward, intuitive, I would even say, um, in creating a blog post. You're just going to click on create post. The title's required. The date you would like the data to be posted is required. You could write it up today and have it post next uh, Wednesday or something like that, all right? Place for photos and or videos. And then you've got the big box where you would type and or copy paste your content. Again, you can borrow content. Just be really sure that you're citing the source. Um, ideally, you would write it from scratch using your own knowledge and skills, all right? And then you would pick a category. Um, home buying, home sellers, master plan communities, property taxes, whatever it is, you have up to three different categories that you can uh, choose. I don't generally localize my posts. I want everybody who can possibly see it to be able to get their hands on it. So I don't specifically want it marketed or to only certain people in certain areas. And then the last section is whether you do or don't want to allow um, comments on your blog entry. So uh, allow members and consumers to comment, or members only, or consumers only, or nobody can comment on that particular blog post. There's reasons for all of them, but make the choice that's best for you. Again, the idea is to have a little bit more traffic and interactivity, right? Current status uh, is a draft. I would check the box and hit publish. If I were ready to do so, I don't have any content, so it wouldn't let me publish it. Even if I wanted to, I didn't fill in the title and all that. And then again, it's automatically putting the two things together, your website and your blog. It's featuring one on the other, right? So again, pretty straightforward and easy to set up. Um, you can see down here, we've got, um, I've written a total of 18 blogs and I have had 5,594 views on those blogs. Again, I'm not a practicing agent. Um, I just mostly write a blog post when I need to for training purposes. So it's a pretty good amount of traffic for not very many um, total blogs over all the years that I've written a little something here and there. 
right? So again, the more spaces you have available, the more uh, of a presence that you have throughout HAR.com, the more places uh, consumers can find you, the more traffic that you're going to get to those listings, to your articles and all of that, all right? And then last in our site editor here in the home section is settings and data. We're not going to come here all that often. This is where you can put your tagline or slogan. Again, going back to my preview. This is where it's going to show up. So if you have a formal tagline or slogan, that's great. Now you can add it there. Chad has a slogan, I believe, helping home buyers and home sellers. So again, if you have a formal tagline, you can do that. If you don't have a formal tagline, you can have something like um, native Houstonian call me today to take advantage of my expertise, you know, something like that. It could just be something short and simple and easy uh, that you come up with. You don't have to have one and that's okay if you don't. All right. And then uh, the web address, again, hr.com slash whatever it is you chose when you set it up. And then your phone number that it's displaying on the web page. If you have an external website, if you have a non-HAR site and you want to link the two together, maybe I have MarilynMaxwell.com. You can enter that information right here. It's just going to put a link to that in the main menu. So in this area, it would add a link for your non-HAR website. And then my company logo, a cover image, another place to change that. And then just a little bit of information about when it was created and must modify. And you can deactivate this web page at any point if you need to do that or want to do that. Uh, I had a member not too long ago who was um, still a member of HAR, but she had gotten a position at a title company. So she wasn't going to be uh, a practicing agent any longer, but she was still going to have her membership with HAR. She didn't need a web page the way that she needed it when she was an agent. So she just deactivated the web page for, for that reason. So again, there may be a time in the future where you need to deactivate it, and you can easily do that under the edit site options. All right. So those are some of the uh, basics, and then a little bit medium um, level uh, add-ons that you can do. Um, looking at some more add-ons and things that you can do to now enhance your web page. Uh, the virtual office website, or VOW, <clears throat> excuse me, VOW, V-O-W, initializing it. Uh, the virtual office website is this little button up here on my preview there. Uh, the idea is the consumer can click that button, fill in the blanks here to sign up, and then they get to see some premium content, it's called. They'll get to see actual sold prices. They'll get to see a brief history of the property, just since it's had the one MLS number, you may be familiar with the property archive report in Matrix that you as agents get to see. The property archive report for agents shows every price change, status change, agent change, all of that. This will just show the consumer the price changes and status changes underneath the most current MLS number. So they get more than they would have had, but they don't get as much as you would have um, as an agent. All right. And then the most important thing that they get is you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever they go to HAR.com, as long as they're logged into the website, every listing is going to say presented by and your information. So if they want to request a showing or um, anything else that generates a lead, you would get all those leads from the website because they are registered with you um, and you are providing that premium content for them. Right? So... There's the button in the top right corner. I don't know that it's, excuse me, hugely noticeable up there. If I hadn't pointed it out, maybe you wouldn't have even noticed it was there. This is a really great place to use the slider. I can encourage them to sign up. I don't think I have one in there anymore. Um, I can encourage them to sign up to get that premium data. Click the link in the top right corner. You know, say something really simple like that in one of these slides. All right, and then that'll help drive traffic to the slider. Uh, the biggest benefit, if we go to virtual office website, the biggest benefit to you is, of course, that you have more traffic, uh, someone else that you are uh, nurturing as a lead, a potential buyer or seller. 
um, and you're providing them a service without really having to do a whole lot. They just signed up and it's um, automatically going to give them what they need. Once you have subscribers, if you click on the number of subscribers that you have, I call it creepy cool. You can see that Joe consumer is my one consumer. He's obviously fake. Um, I can see when he signed up and then he's still active and then he's got uh, one search, zero favorites and zero recommendations. Um, if we click on Joe Consumer's name, we can see more information about Joe. You can recommend properties to Joe. So if you happen to know of a property that you think he would just love, click on add over here to the right, put in the um, criteria to choose that particular property and then recommend it to Joe, All right? Recently viewed sold properties. I call it creepy cool because even if they aren't saving searches or marking something with a heart to favorite it, I can still see their history of uh, previously sold and leased properties and recently viewed um, available properties. So um, that way then kind of a conversation starter, right? Again, my creepy cool is my joke. It's, it's kind of spying on them from the backside of things, but it's with good intentions. It's to help make sure that you know what they're interested in, that you can then help guide them further to properties, to, to more properties that make uh, sense for them, right? So if you notice that they're looking for uh, their recently viewed properties show a lot of properties out in the Katy area, well, that's an indicator that they're interested in Katy. So maybe you didn't know that before and you were able to find that out from where they're searching for properties. Another Marylandism, I call it kind of a uh, lukewarm um, prospecting tool because it's it's very passive. The consumer is just out there doing their thing, looking at properties, searching through HR.com, reaching out to you when they need to or want to. You can do the same. You can reach out to them at, at your convenience and just check in. It's not like some um, like an auto email in Matrix. That's going to them at regular intervals, ASAP or once a day, every day, right? They may not be in that place yet. They may not be ready for those um, auto emails that come more frequently and that are more agent driven. They may still want to be a little bit more um, of a looky-loo on their own without necessarily um, bothering you yet or having those things. They may just be in, you know, the very infant stages of looking for homes and just aren't ready yet to uh, commit to what kind of home that is that they would want. So again, a couple of different reasons why it's beneficial to both consumers and you as the realtor. It's called Virtual Office Website or VOW. And all you had to do was in the website builder, just activate it. So once you went to Virtual Office Website or mine says manage, uh, yours would say activate or enable, right? Again, that's an add-on. If you like the idea of that, want to add it onto your site, go right ahead. If it doesn't sound like it's for you, that's okay too. Whatever you'd like to add and do to any your website is totally up to you. The last menu on here is that um, requires any discussion really is the analytics. This is not an HAR tool. This is Google Analytics, all right? And it says right here, for Google Analytics, click on the link, follow the directions. Basically, when you create a web page, it's going to have some organic traffic. Uh, we are publish publishing it. We are marketing it uh, by it being a part of HAR.com. So anytime someone comes to the page, that's great. Um, we just want them to get there, right? However, they get, got there, um, and then that's good. They can then maybe sign up for my virtual office website and all those different things. But maybe I'm paying for um, a Facebook ad. Maybe I'm promoting a certain article on my website, and it's costing me time and, and or money. I want to know if that's beneficial. I want to know if I'm spending my energy and my money in the right spot. So the Google Analytics, if you go, again, follow the directions that it says uh, on the page there, you get a little code. You just have to have a Gmail, a Google Analytics account. You put in www.marylandmaxwell.com slash, or hr.com slash marylandmaxwell slash whatever it was. Um, again, each of your articles, each custom page has its own unique URL. So let's say I was paying money to advertise this somewhere. I go to Google Analytics, paste that URL, and it will give me a bunch of code, a bunch of kind of gibberish, numbers and letters. 
all right, something similar to that. And then I'll click on save. Now I am tracking how many people go to that website, how much traffic it's getting, how many people are clicking and viewing that article. It's letting me know if I'm spending my time and money efficiently by tracking that page, all right? So again, just a little bit heavier marketing trick or piece um, in the analytics if you would like to do that. Um, again, you can add on. It doesn't cost anything to do Google Analytics. It's just a little bit of time to copy and paste the link and the code. Promote, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's to promote your web page. Uh, so you can share the link with your clients by, say, email or text or something like that with consumers. And then you can push it out to different social media platforms. And then lastly, you can copy that URL. So this would be the uh, main web address for my website. Last couple of things I want to show you, a few more bells and whistles that you could do if you wanted just to, again, enhance, right? So I'm going to click on the har.com logo to leave the member portal and go back out to the consumer site. And then let's say I want to be um, developing business in Katy. I mean, I have an expertise in Katy, all right? I'm going to use 77450 just to kind of make it quick and search for property in that zip code. And then you could use more filters here. Could have used it on the other page also. Uh, you can add a price range. $350, and you could do a certain number of beds, bath. Under more filters, you can pick whether it has a pool or not, uh, single family homes only, uh, quite a few different basic features. Oops, looks like I forgot my price. Let me just do that again real quickly. All right. And then you can click search either in the upper right corner or the bottom left corner, uh, bottom right corner rather. Either one gets you to the same spot. So now here are 35 results. Their homes in that zip code in the price range I picked, and they're single-family homes only, right? So let's just say that's my niche market, uh, my, my expertise, all right? Up here at the top, there is a little gray link icon right below the D in and, if you can't see my mouse on it. This is going to give me what I call a magic link. If I click here, here's a link to that page. Anytime somebody were to click that link, they'd see these same 35 houses and or whatever had been added to the inventory. Um, it keeps it up to date, so it's the latest and greatest results to the price range in the zip code and single family only. So in a week, some of these may have uh, sold or something like that, right? So they dropped off, and then we may have gotten new inventory as well. The biggest, nicest perk of the page, once I copy this text, and open that link, every single bit of that result is now going to be framed with my information. Before, there was no agent over here. Now it's saying presented by Marilyn Maxwell. Let's say somebody clicks to view the information about Gable Ridge and decides they want to see a home, see the home. It's framed by my information. The schedule showing button is linking it to me. It's pointing it back to me to make sure that I get all those leads, all right? So more perks of being a Platinum um, subscriber. This is a nice thing to use for um, a slider, all right? There's one in here. What's new in Katie? Click here to find out. So I typed the word here. I highlighted the text and embedded that URL on that text so that every time they come here and click, you're seeing the latest and greatest results to whatever it is I put in as criteria. And again, it's all framed by Shad. So there's more than 240 results here. All of them say presented by Shad. Okay. So that's some of your extra, extra 
um, featured property list that you can do to enhance your website with that information. Um, just a nice, quick, easy way to give, um, again, whatever your, your niche is. So uh, townhome, multi-million dollar townhomes or, you know, whatever it is. Okay. And that was, again, just a matter of going to ATR.com and running the search initially and then clicking that little gray and white link option to get the magic link. If you just share uh, this link right here, it's not framing it with your information. See how it doesn't have an agent? So don't do that. Always make sure you go to that little gray icon and get the link from there. And that brings me to all of the things related to creating and building and sort of enhancing your website. Um, in terms of building just the website piece. Moving into another tool here to wrap things up with you guys. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about ratings and reviews. We have both the client experience rating and recommendations. Client experience rating is going to be the gold stars. Going back to Shad's preview here, he has 4.84 out of 5. Uh, client experience rating is uh, not something I can participate in as an employee, so we'll just talk about it and have, instead of having too many visuals. Uh, client experience rating is just another piece of the Platinum package of tools. If you choose to participate, great. If not, great. Whatever works best for you. Client experience rating is all or nothing. You do have to participate fully if you choose to participate, meaning you have to send a survey request to every single person you close a transaction with. So whether you represented the buyer, the seller, the landlord, or the tenant in a transaction that closes through MLS, you will have to send a request to them asking them for their feedback, right? Um, if that client chooses not to respond, that doesn't matter. It won't count against you in the slightest, so no worries there. We can't make them reply, right? But we are required to send the request to every person to make it somewhat transparent uh, where we're not just picking and choosing. The other option that you have is to display all or nothing. So under this opt-in and preference, you can see this is set to show all ratings. Your other option is to not show any ratings. Some choose to keep it um, the first one marked, keep it where it's not showing ratings initially um, until they accrue you know, a handful of, of ratings back from their clients. Some people think, Five stars, five stars, right? If I got a 4.5 out of five, I'm doing pretty good. Even if it's just one rating, it's still a good rating. So it's worth showing. So totally up to you. Again, if you choose to show all or not show all. You can opt out of the rating program at any time. If you don't send the survey request to the consumer within 15 days, you're going to automatically be opted out anyway. It'll send you a congratulatory email as soon as you close the property in Matrix. Now, once the property goes into sold, you'll get an email within about 24 hours. It'll have a link in it that you need to click to send out the survey to your client. And then again, if they don't choose to respond, that doesn't count against you in any way. If you don't send it out with that link in that initial email, you'll get a reminder seven days after the closing date and another 10 days after the closing date. And then again, on the 15th day, if you haven't sent it, it'll still email you and say, Unfortunately, you haven't sent out the survey request, so you're going to be auto opted out of client experience rating. To get back in, you just simply need to send the survey request. Just catch back up and you'll be active again in the program. All right. uh, if you choose again to display, it looks like what we have here on Shad's profile. The consumers can click on view ratings and see what it is that made up that 4.84 score. The, Excuse me, the consumers are, are uh, rating you on your competency, excuse me, your market knowledge, your communication, and their overall experience in that one particular transaction. So when the consumer gets their email, it explains all four of these to them in, in detail so they know what they're choosing and why they're, they're choosing that in that particular category. And then lastly, in our preview here, you can see no... Um, actual addresses are used. It just says Anita Street, um, but it doesn't say the actual physical address, nor does it say any consumers' names. Um, there are some uh, spaces for comments. If you want to write comments, a consumer can write comments as well. Uh, you can see here this consumer wrote a nice 
raving review about Shad. Shad also has the opportunity to write response comments, so he could write comments thanking him for the review. Right. And that is client experience rating. So that's one method we have to do the rating. Uh, there is something called a ratings badge. If you have a non-HAR website, you can have those little gold stars show up on your website by copying and pasting this. Again, it's automatically going to show up on HAR if that's uh, what you chose, if you chose to show the ratings. There is a little watch and learn video here as well. Again, another two-minute-ish long video that will walk you through that process. And then the last piece to talk about together today is recommendations. This is another type of rating and review program. It doesn't have any math involved, no gold stars. It's just written um, testimonials. Uh, again, if you're fairly new to real estate, maybe you haven't had a chance to close on transactions just yet, or you've been licensed a while and just haven't had a closing in a while for whatever reason, um, you can use this recommendation tool. It can be other, uh, as you can see there, Consumers or clients, agents, brokers, and agents you've worked with over the last five years. It could be your broker. It could be title people or mortgage people that you send the request to. And the idea is just to ask some folks for some feedback. Hopefully it will be positive once they return some feedback. You have the choice to publish or not publish each individual recommendation. So if you sent something off to Aunt Sally and it comes back not nearly as positive as you thought it would, you just simply don't have to publish that recommendation. So again, you send an email request to that consumer. It doesn't count against you if they choose not to respond. And then if they do respond and you don't um, think it's as positive or as favorable as you had hoped, you just simply don't have to um, publish that recommendation. So a couple of different ways that you can have some good positive feedback posted to your page, either with the gold stars from the client experience rating or these um, written testimonials from recommendations. And that, my friends, brings me to the end of all of the things to cover in today's webinar. Y'all you know, were all quiet. Hopefully that means I was doing a great job <laughs> and it all made good sense. But does anybody have any questions for me that you may not have thought to ask along the way or that's come to mind since we got to the end of the, the rope here? Uh, yes, Donna, everybody will receive a copy of the recording. It takes a couple of days, so just give me a few days and I'll email anyone who registered a copy of the recording so you can get that again. All right. Any other good questions or comments for me? All righty. Well, I thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you being online with me. Really glad to uh, see the, the positive thoughts. You're very welcome. I'm glad that you got uh, good information. Again, feel free to uh, jot down all my contact info and let me know if I can be of help with you on this topic or any other with any of the HER tools. That's what I do. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.